Blog Talk Radio. Greetings, this is Cherokee Billy, and you're here on the Sacred Path Radio Program. And joining me today is my friend Ray. Ray, are you there? I hear a lot of noise. Uh, good, mor good morning. Yes, it is. Well, we're here to talk about animals and their communication, how they really do work with us and are trying to tell us much more than we know. And uh, I'm going to go over a few little thoughts for people, and then we, you can jump in, Ray. How's that? Okay, sounds good. Well, I consider animals psychic, period. And I will always say that, and I have many reasons. But here's some of the things to think about. Have you ever sat in front of your door in anticipation of the arrival of someone you love 15 minutes before they arrive? Have you ever found yourself in unknown territory and walked thousands of miles home? Does your behavior change before an earthquake or hurricane? Do you know what is in a can before it's open? Do you know what someone is thinking about eating before they open the refrigerator? Can you communicate using telepathy? Can you read a human or animal's mind? Now, you may have some of these experiences, but most animals have all of them, and this is why I call them psychics. So anything you want to add, jump in, Ray. Uh, I, not really, but, I mean, animals, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't had a lot of animals, but I've had dogs and cats, and i got cats now, uh, horses, uh, and they know exactly what's going on. I mean, they'll be looking at something, and there's nothing there, but evidently they see something there. Whatever it is that they oh, yeah. see, I have no idea. But they see something. Uh, they know when you're sick, they'll climb up on your lap or, or lay down beside you or whatever the case may be. Uh, oh, they'll yeah. come up. They'll come up and... Uh, They'll just, they're, even if it's just for like two or three minutes, I know my cat likes to jump up and lay on my lap for a couple minutes, and then it's like, okay, I'm done with you. But it's just, I guess, telling well, me that, hey, yeah. I'm thinking I'll be up, um, you know. Well, yeah. yeah, and they do think about us. And you mentioned about them staring at something. A few weeks ago, I had a woman contact me because her dog, every evening at 8.15 p.m., would stare at a spot on her wall, and I mean in fear. And this was a, a Rottweiler, a big dog. And uh, I was able to tell her it was her father-in-law who had passed, and that was the time he passed. That's why he came there. And I worked on asking him to leave, you know, that the message the dog has received it and leave. And the dog did get much calmer after I did that. So it's very real what they go through with their spirituality, very much so. Um, I want to tell one little story about a cat I have had, Isis. She is the most incredible little cat I've ever encountered. One morning... I was asleep, and I heard a voice in English, a woman's voice, calmly say, there's someone in the house. I opened my eyes, and Isis was right on top of my chest, her face at my face. And at the time, I lived where I had cameras around the home, turned it on, and by God, I saw where the burglar was. And then I was able to scare him off. But I just couldn't believe it. I mean, perfect, clear English. I've written about it and made a video about Isis, the mystic cat, because she really convinced me of the incredible knowledge and power they have when they need it. And she needed to communicate that to me quickly. Who knows how long she was on top of me trying to get that message through. But she did do it before any harm came to me. Amazing little cat. Anyway, there's my one little story. <laughs> I had, uh, my, my horse wasn't passed, he was, he was, there was somebody walking through the uh, woods, and I couldn't see him, there was a cop at the front door because somebody had broke into the house next to us, and uh, the cop was asking if we'd seen anything, and my horse started to carry on, and um, what happened was, uh, 
I when I told the cop, I said, I'll be back in a minute. And he says, where are you going? I said, I don't know. The horse is carrying on. So I went out, and I, there was a little um, piece of banister. So just to protect myself, I grabbed a piece of banister. And I went to go to the I went in the paddock, went to go to the fence. And my horse wouldn't let me in front of him. He kept me up. I would move to the right. He moved to the right. I moved to the left. He moved to the left. Uh, and then eventually, and then the cop come up with his um, headlight and come to find out it was another cop coming through the woods with a dog. But uh, their horse mm -hmm. was just had no intentions of letting me in front of him no matter what. Yeah, he was protecting you. And you didn't yeah. have a clue what was going on. No. There you go. You know, it isn't, you know, just dogs or cats like you're bringing up about, you know, a horse. Because... They're all, and Native Americans really adored the horses, you know, very much. You know, I'm sure you know that. Native yeah, Americans and that's were very all, much in touch with the animals being spirit guides. And they honored them in every way. Like when they had to kill an animal for food, they would say prayers and ceremonies over the animal. And they used every part of the animal for something, not just food for clothing. Uh, whatever, and they honored that animal. I'm sorry. Especially the buffalo. Especially the buffalo. Oh, yes. uh, everything. I don't. Uh, you know, it's amazing when you sit and think about it. Uh, how they survived, and I mean, they're they're riding on horseback with bows and arrows. And if anybody's ever seen a buffalo, they are a big animal. Oh, you know, three thousand pounds. Often, and it often makes me wonder. How in the heck they they did it? And I said I said that well, exact same thing to a friend of mine who was Lakota, and he and he says he says you know he says sometimes I think about that too. He says and I don't understand it. Well, they were so in touch with the Creator and Mother Earth. They understood harmony, rhythms, and other things. And I think they hunted. Well, I'm sure they did hunted at certain times. That they knew the animal would be ready and it would be good for both. Quick way to put it. I think they were very much in tune with that from everything I know of the history of Native Americans. You know, and they, again, they lived in, coexisted with animals in their community. Well, they didn't. They also didn't take more than what they needed. They took what they needed and that was that. Uh, there was yeah, no they did such go killing, killing massively, like 50 buffaloes. No. Well, that, that I mean, they even showed that in, um, I can't think of the name of the movie, oh, Dancers with Wolves, uh, you know, where, where they come down over the hill and people just took them for their, uh, killed the buffalo for their hides. And then, you know, later on, they... Uh, white man started killing the buffaloes to basically starve out the Native Americans. You know, and they became massive hunters of uh, buffalo. So there's a lot of history there. And again, buffaloes are spiritual beings and very intuitive. They cannot even see very well, which most people don't know. They have very poor eyesight, but they understand things again and they're communicating. And it's not that difficult it just you sometimes have to just clear your mind to really hear what an animal is saying to you now I do animal communication all the time and it's quite amazing what I get some of the answers some are you know quite simplistic you know they don't live such complicated lives and thoughts as we do so their their thoughts are much easier they're much easier to read versus a human Right. right. They, well, don't, if an animal, they don't hide. Go ahead. If an animal's mad at you, you're going to know it. Where if a human's oh, yes. mad at you, they'll play a game uh, that you won't know it until it's too late. Oh, I've yes. Al if that I've is always the said, truth. I, I've always said I trust animals. You know, if an animal doesn't like somebody, I really look heavily into that person because if they don't like them, there's got to be something the matter. But that's my own personal opinion. 
no, that's a very real thought. That isn't just an opinion. Animals are very clear and very adamant about who they like and who they don't like. They never are wishy-washy about, you know, well, maybe I like them. No, it's one or the other, and they're always right on. Because, again, they can see auras. They see things that we as humans normally don't see. They see it. They were given great gifts, and I always say they're connected closer to God than humans. No two ways around it. And that's why I don't understand people who don't believe that animals live after this. They are a spirit, they're a soul. They live on. Well, uh, I've had, and I'm just going to make this quick, I had a, a small dream last night where my one dog, now he had passed, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, he come to me, and he just he just looked at me, and he says, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Everything's good. What had happened was he was really sick, and I got down on the floor with him. He put his head in my lap. And he looked at me and like he just he knew something was up. So I went out and, and dug a hole. And then when I come back, I sat down again with him. He looked at me like he took his last breath, and you know, and, and basically saying it was okay. I understand. And they do. They do understand. And I just noticed something here, Ray. I didn't program this correctly. We're only going to be 15 minutes instead of 30. So we're down to only three minutes, just to let you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. There's so much to talk about with animals. and Oh, well, I can't extend it once I program in the time. I'm not allowed to extend it on blog talk. But we're trying to get through some main points and the fact about animals' communication. And I think most pet parents know what their pets are saying, but sometimes you just get that one thing, you're going, what are they trying to tell me? And that happens from time to time. Like what I mentioned about that dog recently who was seeing spirits in them. The human didn't know what was going on. I told them what was happening. You know, the animal hmm. related to me. Yeah. So they, they don't, the people just don't believe that they can communicate, but again, they can send uh, their thoughts far away, not just to you, but far away. They go way out their thoughts, very much so. Yeah, I believe that uh, they see stuff that uh, the everyday normal person can't see. Uh, you know, whether it be uh, good spirits, bad spirits, whatever the case may be, they can see them, they can see people visiting. Uh, you know, they, they like you said, they're, they're very intuitive, they're very uh, psychic, out of a lack of word to use. Um, so, I mean, if well, you I see felt that after, after my cat Isis, there, I used the word psychic because she was a mystic, she was whatever you want to call it, she had it, and it was amazing. You know, that, I'll never forget, you know, her waking me up with someone on in my home, and, uh, she alerted me of everyone she didn't like, and it was pretty much almost every human she ever encountered. <laughs> now, we're down to just a short time. Yeah, she did not. I was the only human she ever trusted, period. Mm. She really was intelligent. And my other cat, who was with her, lived with her, Tigre. She was very intuitive as well. She let me know who she didn't like. Oh, yeah, they both let me know. But T Tigre was more friendly to humans. Anyway, yeah. I maybe we've got to do this show again on animals, but maybe it's a reason for it to be short. Maybe more people will listen to this program in the future. You know, yeah. people don't want to spend 30 minutes. But this will be available here and on uh, my YouTube channel. Also, be sure you check out my website, CherokeeBillySpiritualAdvisor.com. Check out my services for animals. Read the reviews. Read the reviews on Google, and you'll see... I have quite a high success rate. And I thank you, Ray, for taking time out of your Sunday morning to do this program. Uh, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure because you always add something of insight and value. People often comment to me about you on these programs that they enjoy because we're just common sense people. But anyway, our time's up. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye.